Hello everyone, welcome to this video all about arithmetic operations within the category of measurement and data. In particular, we're going to be looking at the category of speed in this video. So let's start out by looking at this brief description of what speed questions typically involve. Speed is the rate at which an object travels. It will involve two other measures, time and distance in this method. Speed questions require basic knowledge about unit conversions involving time and the metric measurements. The questions usually use division and multiplication and understanding of bond mass is required for such questions. Okay, so we all know what speed is. It's basically how fast something travels. And that means because of what speed actually is, it actually depends on two other things. And the question, sorry, not the question, the description tells us what these things are, the time and the distance. And that makes sense. If something is traveling at a certain speed, it's going to travel a certain distance for a set amount of time. So these three things are very, very heavily interconnected. And if you saw the video on distance, you'll see that this was also mentioned in that video. So speed can be calculated by dividing the distance by time. But the thing is, personally, when I study speed, distance and time, because of how interrelated these three things are and the equations are all very, very similar, I found it quite difficult to remember the correct formula. And sometimes I would use the wrong formula. And well, that obviously has catastrophic effects. So what I actually do instead of memorizing these formulas is that I actually use what's a handy trick known as the distance speed time triangle. And that's because it's much easier for the brain to remember one little picture than three different complicated formulas. And all you have to remember is to draw a triangle and put D on the top representing distance, S on the bottom representing speed, and T on the bottom representing time. So this triangle tells you all the formulas that you need to figure out distance, speed, or time. So the way you use this formula is by for example, if we're looking for speed, you cross out speed in the distance speed time triangle. The remaining letters and their positions tells you what formula you need to use to calculate that thing. So in this case, we've got D over T. So we do distance divided by time to give us the speed. And you can do that for any other letter in this triangle. If, for example, I wanted the time then you would cross out the time and you've got distance divided by speed to give you the time. Or if you wanted the distance, you cross out that one and you've got speed times by time to give you the distance. So you can see it's a very, very easy way of remembering all the formulas you need for this specific topic. So other than that, the other key thing to talk about are unit conversions. And that's because, well, Depending on what units you're representing the speed, then the calculations can be quite difficult. Sorry, not difficult, not necessarily difficult, but different. So if you're representing the time or the speed, for example, in 60 kilometers per hour, but then the answer wants something in meters per second, you need to be able to convert these two different units. Because if you're dealing with kilometers and meters in the same question, you can't go ahead with the calculation until both of them are the same units. And the same goes for the hours and the seconds. Both of these are different units for the same measure. So they tell you different things. And that doesn't let you compare those two numbers together equally. So that means uh, whenever we do unit conversions, we need to make sure everything that is given has to be at the same unit. So one kind of tip that I would use for these kind of things is actually to use the units or consider them like normal fractions. And so, for example, if I wanted to take a random number, maybe 36 kilometers per hour, and I want to convert it into meters per second, 
Now, to do that, I would need to know that there are 1,000 meters in one kilometer. And you would also need to know that since there are 60 seconds in one minute, 60 times 60 seconds are in one hour. So how does the tip in remembering the fact that you can treat units like fractions help? Well, you can multiply the unit by this conversion to convert it into the preferred unit of your choice. So for example, we know that since one kilometer is the same thing as 1000 meters, we can represent it like this. And we can also do the same thing for the one hour and 3600 seconds. So why this helps is that because now that if you treat it like a normal fraction, you know that you can cancel out the common factors in the fraction. So you can cancel out the kilometers, cancel out the hours, and the units that you're left with are meters per second. So then 36 becomes 36 kilometers per hour becomes 36 times 1000 divided by 3600 meters per second. And that makes the calculation then much easier. And it also ensures that you're using the correct conversions to change your units. So doing things like that can be a really helpful way of understanding the unit conversions in your questions. The final thing to mention is that since there can be a lot of different orders of operations being used in your questions. It's always important to fall back on the rule of body mass whenever you're doing questions. And that is, of course, the golden rule that tells you that you need to follow a specific order whenever you do mathematics questions. And that would be that brackets always have to come first, then your orders, which includes things like indices or roots, then your division and multiplication, and then your addition and subtraction. Okay, so hopefully that covers all of the most important trips and techniques that you might use for speed related questions. Let's see if we can use them to our best of understandings in this example question. Now, in this example, we're told Becky's mum was in a rush and needed to travel 48 kilometers in 20 minutes. What should the average speed of her journey be? Okay, so for this question, we are asked to find the speed, which we talked about how using this distance speed time triangle gives you the formula as speed is equal to distance divided by the time. So we're given both of those measures in the question. So this question becomes fairly straightforward. We divide the distance by the time, 48 divided by 20 to give us 2.4. And maintaining the units, this is 2.4 kilometers per minute. However, if we take a look at the answer options, we can see that none of the answers match up. And that is because of the units. Even if uh, this is the correct speed, it may not necessarily be the one the question wants. And if you take a look at most of your cars that you drive, generally speed is represented in meters per second or kilometers per hour. So because of that, we're going to need to do some conversions here. We've got the correct number, we just need to represent it in a different time. So if we have 2.4 kilometers, per minute. And by the looks of things, taking a look at the answer options, the other unit that we could use is kilometers per hour. We want to convert this into exactly that. So again, what I would do is you could treat this like a normal fraction. We know that there are 60 minutes per hour. So multiplying that to the original speed gives you the correct conversion because the minutes cancel out and you're left with the units of kilometers per hour. So the maths just becomes 2.4 times by 60 kilometers per hour. And that gives you 144 kilometers per hour. So we can see the correct answer was option C. 
Alternatively, when this didn't work out, we could just take a look at this equation again and convert the data given in the question to the necessarily, uh, sorry, the necessary unit first. So 20 minutes, if we wanted to represent this in hours, since there are 60 minutes in an hour, this would be equal to one third of an hour. So then uh, we apply the exact same formula. We've got 48 kilometers and we're dividing by one third of an hour, which is the same thing as taking 48 and multiplying it by three, giving us the exact same answer of 144 kilometers per hour. So that would be another method that you could use if you're not too sure of how to go with the fraction kind of method that we spoke of. Both of them are completely valid methods of tackling these questions and provides you with a bit of flexibility in what you can do when you want to answer questions of this type. So that would be the general strategy that you would use in speed type questions. Hopefully this will be of some help when you do speed related questions in the future. Thanks everyone so much for watching.